good day ladies and gentlemen this is dr Ferrer, your professor our topic this afternoon is about the parts of a map now my question is what are maps these are actually diagrammatic representation of an area of land or sea showing physical features like cities, roads, and many others. Maps contain lots of information such as title, legend, grid, compass rows, scale, and many others. Now let's discuss the first information contained in a map. We have of course the title. The title of a map explains the subject of the map and gives you an idea of what information the map conveys. It describes the theme or the subject of a map and it shows applicable information for the intended audience. Next is the compass rose or also called the wind rose or the rose of the winds which is being used to display the orientation of the cardinal directions and in their intermediate points. In short, the compass rose shows your directions on a map. These cardinal directions I am talking about earlier includes the north, the south, the east, and the west. And the intermediate directions are the northeast, the northwest, the southwest, and the southeast. Next are labels. These are actually words or phrases that explain features on the map. As you can see in the picture shown and the slide, the maps has lots of has lots of labels explaining that specific feature on the map. Another is the legend or the key. They are actually lists that explains the symbols and the use of color on a map. Legend or case are actually visual explanation of the symbols that you can find on the map. Typically, it includes a sample of its symbol like point or a line of an a or an area and a short description of what that symbol means. Next is the lines of latitude. These are actually, actually imaginary lines that measure distance north or south of the equator and run from east to west on the map. These lines are also called parallel lines because they do not touch. The lines of latitude start at 0 degrees at the equator and end at 90 degrees at the north and south poles. There are five major lines of latitude. One is the equator, next is the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn, the Arctic Circle, and the Antarctic Circle. Latitude lines ran east or west but they measure north or south of the equator at zero degrees, splitting the Earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. As you can see on the slide, lines of latitude as shown are numbered from zero degrees at the equator to 90 degrees north latitude at the north pole. And on the other side, lines of latitude are numbered from 0 degrees 
at the equator to 90 degrees south latitude at the south pole. How about equator? Equator is an imaginary line around the middle of a planet or other celestial body that is halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole at zero degrees latitude. In short, it divides the planet into the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. So, being at zero degrees latitude, it is neither north nor south. It is at the center between the north and the south. So as the earth divided by the equator, 40 degrees north is the 40 degrees line of latitude north of the equator as shown in the slide, while 40 degrees south is the 40 degrees line of latitude south of the equator. Then next we have the Tropic of Cancer, also known as the Northern Tropic. It's the most northerly circle of latitude in Earth at which the sun can be directly overhead. This occurs on the June solstice when the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun to its maximum extent. It also reaches 90 degrees below horizon at solar midnight on the December solstice. Now, what is the June solstice? June solstice is the solstice on the earth that occurs each year falling on the 20th to the 22nd of June according to the Gregorian calendar. In the southern hemisphere, I mean in the northern hemisphere, the June solstice is the summer solstice, while in the southern hemisphere, it is the winter solstice. In like manner, December solstice is the solstice that occurs is December, typically on December 21st, but it can vary positive or negative one day according to the Gregorian calendar. In the Northern Hemisphere, the December solstice is the winter solstice, while in the Southern Hemisphere, it is the summer solstice. Now, what is a winter solstice, or sometimes called midwinter? This occurs when one of the Earth's poles has its maximum tilt away from the sun, and this happens twice a year, once in its hemisphere. How about summer solstice, or sometimes called Midsummer. This occurs when one of the Earth's poles has its maximum tilt toward the sun, and this happens twice yearly, once in its hemisphere. Now let's have the Tropic of Capricorn. This actually lies at 23 degrees. 26 minutes south of the equator and marks the most southerly latitude at which the sun can appear directly overhead at noon. So this is also the circle of latitude that contains the subsolar point at the December solstice. So at this event occurs at the December solstice when the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun to its maximum extent again. Tropic of Capricorn also is the southernmost latitude where the sun can be seen directly overhead. It reaches 90 degrees below the horizon 
at solar midnight and the June solstice. Next we have the Arctic Circle. This is actually a pearl of latitude on the Earth at approximately 66.5 degrees north from the equator as shown on the slide. So on the day of the northern summer solstice, that's around June 22nd each year, you can see the Arctic Circle. Uh, or you can see on the Arctic Circle the sun above the horizon for a full of 24 hours. And of course, opposite to Arctic Circle is the Antarctic Circle. This is also a parallel of latitude on the Earth at approximately 66.5 degrees south of the equator as shown on the slide. On the day of the southern summer solstice, that's also around December 22nd of the year, as an observer in the Antarctic Circle, you can see the sun above the horizon for a full of 24 hours. Now we have the lines of longitude. These are also imaginary lines that measure distance east or west of the prime meridian. And it runs from north to south on the map. These are lines connect at the north and the south poles. And these lines are also called meridians. So as you can see on the slide, you have there the prime meridian, which is located at zero degrees. So it is neither east or west. So the prime meridian divides the earth into the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere. So lines of longitude begin at the prime meridian. On the left, 60 degrees west is the 60 degrees line of longitude west of the prime meridian, while on your right, 60 degrees east is the 60 degrees line of longitude east of the prime meridian. Again, lines of longitude are numbered east from the prime region to the 180 degrees line and west from the prime region to the 100 degrees line. Now, let's go back to the prime region. As uh, mentioned earlier, it is 0 degrees and the 180 degrees line that split the earth into the western hemisphere and the eastern hemisphere. So as shown in the slide, you can see there the western hemisphere and the eastern hemisphere. So places located east of the prime region have an east longitude address, while places west of the prime region have a west longitude address. In addition, prime region is an imaginary line that passes north to south through the Greenwich Observatory in London, England. Now we have another term to define here. It's the International Date Line. It is established actually in 1884. This is the line that passes through the mid-Pacific Ocean and follows a 180 degrees longitude north to south line on Earth. It is located halfway around the world from the prime meridian. 
It functions as a line of demarcation separating two consecutive calendar days. So when you are or when you cross the date line, you become a time traveler of sorts. For instance, when you cross the West, like the United States, and it's one day later. But when you cross back, say, to the Philippines, and you have gone back on time. So, America to Asia, you will gain a day. And Asia to America, you will lose a day. So, we have two kinds of location, actually. The absolute location and the relative location. Absolute location are those uh, latitude and longitude lines no? showing an exact point on the earth while relative location is not considered as an exact location. These are the location that people use no? to show direction and distance to give an idea of where something else. Let's say when you say, my house is located there, somewhere near the school or near the church or uh, near my neighbor, something like that. It's relative location. But when you uh, point out an exact location of uh, something on earth then that speaks for absolute location then another part of the map is the scale this actually shows the ratio between the unit of length on the map and the unit of distance on earth and uh, we have two types of scale as used on the map one is the ratio scale and the other is the bar scale. The difference between the two is that the ratio scale shows the distance on the map compared to the real earth measurement. Example is one is to 500 miles, something like that. And the bar scale shows the ratio of distance on the map to the distance on the earth. Some maps also show symbols. Uh, these are used to represent items on the map such as capital cities. So usually, usually symbolized by star economic activities or natural resources such as the presence of gold, of silver, of uh, mountains uh, or mining areas uh, in the map. So those are uh, the seven parts of the map. If you have questions, you can post your questions in the Google Classroom or you can ask that during our Google Meet. And for your activity for this lesson, create your own map from home to school. Make sure to label the necessary parts and landmarks. That would be all for today's class. Thank you for listening.